We'll talk about the hereafter. Uh, the special thing about Rasulullah is that he will be the first to be resurrected. So this hadith in Sahih uh, Bukhari, that the first uh, first horn, you know, the first uh, sword that will be blown. Uh, what will happen? Everybody will die, right? So everybody will die. Nobody will be alive. And the second trumpet, when it will be born, uh, blown by the angel, everybody will start getting resurrected. So Rasulullah he said that, I will be the first to lift my head and there will be Musa salam, holding or grasping one of the legs of the throne, throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I do not know whether he was there all the time or whether he was the first one to be resurrected. So he doesn't know that, but he said that I will be the first to lift the head. I will be the first one. So he, the scholar said he will be the first to be resurrected. And other thing, Rasulullah will be honored with the largest congregation on the Day of Judgment. So he will look on the right, he will look on the left, like there will be like lots and lots of people. And will he, when he asks the questions to the angels, whose Ummah is this? The angels will say, this is the followers of Musa, salam, the Jews. These are the followers of the uh, Isa. Salam. So he wanted to have like lots of followers of his own. So uh, angels tell him that you look, those people all in the horizon, huge people, those are your Ummah. It's the largest that you can ever imagine. So Rasulullah was very happy to hear that. And he said, Muslims, that he told us that uh, have a lot of children. Have a lot of children so that I can be proud on the Day of Judgment. So it's like uh, a matter of honor. It's a matter of honor for Rasulullah that he was successful. The success of the Prophet is determined by how much of the followers they have. Right? So he will be proud on the Day of Judgment, his accomplishment, that that will be honor. Let's talk about one, one concept uh, about Maqam al-Mahmud and also the Wasila. So what's going to happen is that when everybody will be resurrected on the Day of Judgment, that will be like very, very difficult situation. It's not going to be easy. You know, like people will be raised naked on that day, but the situation will be so horrible that they will not be able to, they will not even think about the fact that people are not wearing clothes. Now just imagine like, you know, uh, uh, for example, a person, if he is like, if the court says that he should be executed, if he should be like hung in public place, right? you know that people do that, right? Then courts sometimes they do, in olden days specifically. They tie the rope in the neck in front of public and they, uh, you know, hang him. Just imagine a person who is given that sentence and when he goes up on the stage and the rope is put in his head, around his neck, and if he happens to see some naked people in the audience, do you think he's going to see those people? I mean, at that time, the, the kind of feeling that will go inside your mind, it's beyond everything. You know, he doesn't really has any desire or anything. It's just like it's... Now, max that he can think. All he's seeing is his death. So, you just multiply it hundred and thousand times. That will be the day of resurrection. It's you will just, you will just, uh, you know, your sweat. You will be drowning in your own sweat. And on that day, sun will be brought closer and closer and closer. That you know, it's gonna get very difficult. And hell, you will see hell in front of you. It's all there, and all the punishments there. People will just freak out and they will run to the prophets. They will run to the prophets, save us on this day, save us. And on that day, they will first approach Adam alayhi salam. It's a long hadith, but I'm just shortening it. They'll go to Adam alayhi salam, they'll go to Musa alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam. They, they said, oh, that, oh, 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 please intercede with us, with our Lord. Don't you see our condition? Please help us in this situation. You're the prophet, you're the greatest prophets, the five prophets. So... Or what will the prophets say? Prophets say that, you know, they will try to remember their shortcomings during that day. And they will say that, today my Rabb, today my Rabb is so much angry, so much angry that he was never, he was never angry like that before. And he will never be angry like this ever after. 
so much of sins that humans committed, he is very angry. So people don't know what to do. So Prophet uh, Isa alayhi salam, he tells people that, you know, go to Rasulullah alayhi salam, whose sins have been for forgiven past and future, go to him. So when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he goes, he, when people uh, go, uh, go to him, he will say that, yes, I will help you out in this situation. But So what will he do? He will go under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's throne and what will he do? He will fall down in sajda. He will fall down in sajda and at that time, what will he do? He will start making dhikr, he will start praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the hadith, it is said that he will pray so much, so much that nobody prays like that before. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him that knowledge to praise. So special praises that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala... And this will happen for a long, long time. Many, many uh, uh, hours will pass. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will address him that, Oh Muhammad, وسلم, raise your head. Raise your head. Ask and your request will be granted. Intercede and your intercession will be accepted. So at that time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will request Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to start the accounting process so that, you know, this whole people can go get out of this, this sun, this whole huge situation, the, the problem, the big uh, misery that's happening at that time. So, Hisab Kitab will start at that time. And when this happens, uh, uh, he, everybody will start praising him because he is the one who helped start this process and he is the one who helped remove that misery, right? So they will praise him and this is what is called uh, Maqam Mahmud, Maqam Mahmud, the praised station. And which dua do we use to... Uh, the dua where Maqam al Mahmud is mentioned, the Adhan. The Adhan, we mention it after uh, every Adhan, right? Uh, Rasulullah said that whoever recites this dua after Adhan, my intercession for him is guaranteed. I'm going to make intercession for him. And imagine the situation, no other prophets were helping at that time, he will be given this honor. Uh, so, what's the dua? Allahumma rabba hadhi dawati tamadiya. You know, and until then, Ati Muhammad and Ilbasila Dal Fodila the Bar for Muhammad and Ladi Wada. So, anyways, and also, Wasila basically that also we have in this dua that basically refers to the, uh, the, the intercession itself. Rasulullah will intercede on behalf of uh, every Muslim, uh, whoever is qualified for his intercession. He will intercede and his intercession will be accepted and he will be the first to intercede. Nobody will get this honor. And Rasulullah himself said that I am the master of all people on the day of judgment. That's the special honor.